Hello, um, everyone. So you're welcome to um, this lecture. In the last couple of lectures, we looked at uh, probabilities in general. Uh, so in this lecture series, we are going to look at uh, discrete probability distributions. We have discrete and continuous probability distributions. This is going to focus on discrete probability um, distributions. So I'll give an introduction to that. And then um, we'll look at what a probability distribution is. And then much later on, we'll talk about the mean variance and expectation of um, probability distribution. Really mean variance and the standard deviation, because in this case, the expectation is the same as the mean. And then we'll look at two specific examples of discrete probability distributions. Um, these are the binomial distribution and the Poisson um, distribution, okay? So many decisions um, in, in real life situations um, are made by assigning probabilities to possible outcomes to different situations, all right? And then you evaluate the results. Um, and this can be very helpful in making decisions um, depending on the outcomes of these uh, probabilities. So if you are a saleswoman or a salesman, um, you can calculate, uh, for example, the probability that you will make in a, a zero sales or one or two or three sales in a single day in the marketplace or in your shop or store, right? Um, and then you can assign probabilities to these uh, numbers, all right? You can get statistics, uh, the mean, the variance, standard deviations um, based on this. Um, and then you'll be able to compute the average number of sales that uh, you make per week, for example. Um, and if you are, let's say, on a commission, these uh, numbers and probabilities will help you to approximate how much you earn, say weekly or monthly um, or yearly, all right? So that is a simple example of how you can apply these things. Once you are able to assign probabilities to this, then you can compute some kind of statistics to help you, um, you know, make informed decisions. So they are very important. Uh, remember that um, a variable is um, an attribute or a characteristic uh, which can take different values, right? That's, that's a variable. So under discrete probability distributions, we'll be using variables like, you know, the capital X, capital Y, and Z to represent uh, uh, variables, okay? The random variable. We'll define a random variable later on. But when a variable is associated with a probability, we call that a random variable, okay? As opposed to any other variable, um, which is not attached to any probability of any kind. Okay, so if a die is rolled, for example, a letter such as X can be used to represent the outcomes okay, of rolling a die. We know that when you roll a die, um, the numbers that show up are from one to six, right? So you can let X be any of these numbers, okay, to represent them as, as, a, as a random variable. If you toss two coins, uh, we know the sample space, right? You could have zero heads, you can have one head or two heads. So you can let Y, capital Y, represent, for example, for example, the number of heads, right, that will show up. And so Y would assume the numbers zero, one, or two, okay? So these are, these are examples of uh, random, random variables. So by definition, a random variable is a variable whose values are determined by chance or by uh, some probability, right, okay? So we can classify variables as discrete or continuous. The difference is that um, um, if a variable assumes specific numbers or values, okay, then it is said to be discrete. In other words, if you can count, all right? If you can count the values of the variable, then it is said to be a discrete variable. So if you roll a die, we can count the outcomes. One, two, three, four, five, six. We can count them, right? They can go up to infinity, but we can count them. All right. So that is said to be discrete. Um, so another example is the number of students in a class, say a pharmacy class. Uh, each week, the number of cars 
um, in the parking lot, uh, and so on. Things that you can count, right? So they form a discrete uh, variable. Um, on the other hand, if a variable can assume values uh, in the interval between two given values, all right, then the variable is called continuous, a continuous variable. Okay, so um, here's an example. So take, um, well, examples of these continuous variables would be temperatures, weights, heights, time. Okay, okay, so for example, if we say that the temperature goes from 28 degrees to 38 degrees, you can't within a 24 hour period, in a 12 hour period. What that means is that this temperature has passed through every possible value between 28 and 33 to, to, to move from 28 to 33. All right. We move from 28.01, 28.00001, if you like, 001, 28.00001. And so these numbers between this and this are really uncountable. Okay. That is why we say that assume all values in an interval. Okay. So continuous random variables are obtained from data that can be measured rather than counted. Okay, so you can measure it, but you can't really count. You see that between this and this, there were uh, 10 temperatures. You can't say that, right? Because it's, it's uncountable moving from here. Uh, we can measure weight, we can measure height, uh, temperatures, okay? So we can't count them, but we can measure them. So that's the difference. Uh, that difference is very important. So we are not going to look at continuous random variables now. So we are going to focus on discrete random variables, variables that you can count. Okay, so before we give you a formal definition of what a discrete probability distribution is, we want to look at a, a simple example of tossing three coins. Okay, if you toss three coins, the sample space is given by this, right? You could have all tails, TTT, two tails and a head, all right, all the way to, if you like, uh, three heads. So if X is a random variable representing the number of heads, the number of heads, then X can assume the value of zero. For instance, X is zero here because there's no head here. Or one, all right, in the case where you have only one head, um, Let's see here, okay? Or you can assume two or three, okay? Then the probability of no hairs, right? Or that is all tails will be one out of eight. Okay, we have eight elements here. So we have only zero, X is zero here. It's only one element, so one out of eight. The probability of getting one head, there are three of them, okay? We have one head here, one, two, and three. So three out of eight, okay? And then the probability of getting three heads would be one out of eight, that is this, all right? So we take X, the values is assume and compute probabilities for each of these numbers. And that will give us uh, what is called a, probability, a probability distribution. And it's discrete because the outcomes are countable. All right, so zero heads has this probability, one has this probability, two and three. Okay, so this is a probability distribution for the uh, the, for the events, the experiment that we just, just um, performed. You can also represent probability distributions um, graphically, right? So you can put the probabilities on the um, Y axis, and then the number of hex, that is the variable X, your random variable on the X axis. Um, zero does not necessarily have to be here for, for, for um, visual purposes, you can put the zero here, okay? Or you can put it at the origin, it doesn't matter. So zero um, hex has a probability of one of, out of eight. One hex has a probability of three out of eight. Two heads has the same probability, three out of eight, and then three heads has a probability of one out of eight. So this is a representation of the discrete probability distribution that, um, that is represented by this, okay? So you can you can do it this way, or you can use a graph to, uh, to show it the distribution. All right, so now we define it formally, a discrete probability distribution consists of the values a random variable can assume, 
and the corresponding probabilities of the values. All right, so you have values and then their corresponding probabilities uh, for a discrete random variable that forms a discrete probability, probability distribution. Okay. The probabilities are determined theoretically in this case, right, or by observation. All right, like empirical, empirical uh, probabilities. Okay. So that is uh, that is what is called a probability distribution. So let's look at an example. Um, a car rental agency keeps track of the number of cars it rents each day during a period of, of 90 days. The number of cars rented per day is represented by X, okay? And the results are given here. You want to compute the probability for each X and construct the probability distribution and graph for the data, okay? So the number of cars, it, they could rent out zero cars or one car or two cars, all right? So um, for zero cars, for 45 days, they didn't rent out any car, all right? That's what this means. And then for 30 days, they rented out one car and for 15 days, two cars, all right? So you have this uh, number is given to you. So you have to turn this into a probability distribution. So for each of this, you need the probability corresponding to this variable zero here. So to do that, really what you do is that you form another column here, right, for the probabilities. The probability of zero cars will be the number of days, which is 45, divided by 90, right? And that will give you that probability. For one, you take 30 divided by 90, that gives you the prob corresponding probability. And for two, you take 15 uh, divided by 90 and have the probability that is the probability distribution. And of course, from there, you can then construct the graph. So for zero, you have to take 45 out of 90.5. For one, you have 30 over 90. For two, you have 15 out of 90, which gives you 0.15. And so you have your X, it could be um, in columns or rows. So you have number of cars rented, that is X. And then you have their the corresponding probabilities, which I give you my guess. So this then is a probability distribution, okay? For our data that is given. And you can represent them graphically as here. For zero, you have this probability. For one, you have the probability. And for two, you have that probability. Okay. Okay, good. So um, let's finish up with some requirements. Um, for probability distributions, okay? So this, we're just going to state two requirements. The sum of all the probabilities must equal one. We've seen this already somewhere, right? That the sum, if you sum all the different probabilities, you must get one, okay? And the probability must lie between zero and one, right? Inclusive, zero and one inclusive. So the probability can't be a negative number, it can be less than zero, and it can't be greater than one, all right? Otherwise, it's not a probability or probability distribution. Okay, so determine whether each of um, these distributions is a probability distribution. Well, here you have one out of five. They are one, two, three, four, five of them. So if you look at the probabilities, five times five is one. So if you add this up, you're going to get one. So yes, indeed, it's a probability distribution. Okay. Here, straight away, we can tell that this is not a probability distribution. B is not because we have a negative probability here. And we also have a probability that is greater than one. Okay, so based on this and that, we can, we can um, say that B is not a probability distribution. Uh, you can look at this as well. Note that if I add 0.5 to 0.3, I get 0.8. 0.8 plus 0.4 is 1.2. So the sum of these probabilities is greater than one. So C is not probability distribution, okay? Check that this is a probability distribution because if you add the numbers, you get one, and none of the numbers is greater than one or negative. So C, D is a probability distribution, okay? Check that, okay? Here are some other exercises for you to try, okay? Try some of these. And then um, in the next lecture, we'll look at um, the mean, the variance, and standard deviation and the expectation for uh, 
probability distribution. All right. 